yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? This is your friendly neighborhood knucklehead, and this is the Part-Time Artist Podcast. This is episode 177. I know, I know, it's been a while, but here we are. Uh, March has been uh, a busy month. I've been all over the place. I was in New York. I was doing uh, uh, shows with War Park. There was a lot of cool shit going on. Uh, a lot of family time too. Do you guys have a lot of uh, family, like like relatives, born in March? A lot of people are born in March. It seems like so. Anyway, there was a lot of just a lot of cool stuff going on. Also, YouTube. I, I don't know if you guys are keeping up with me on YouTube, but that is my main passion right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, I love you. <laughs> but there's been a lot of other uh, videos that I've been putting out. I'm working on my next punkatized. You guys heard it here first. I'm working on a Shania Twain song, making it a punk song. It's really, it's so much fun. Uh, but it is, uh, it is a little bit more challenging than I thought it was. I was like, uh, I was singing along to it and I was like, oh, I could do this. And then I started tracking vocals and I was like, oh my God, this is so much harder to sing than I thought it was. God damn it. Shania, Shania is great. Um, but yeah, so the other passion that I've been doing is teaching. I don't know if you guys can see my little teacher thing. You guys got to come on to the YouTube if you want to see my little teacher <laughs> teacher plaque back there uh found that thing actually on the street but in the trash and i uh, picked it up it says i am a teacher what is your superpower so anyway teaching in philly has been a lot of fun and that's been my main well one of my main passions right now um it's been lighting me up giving me a lot of uh excitement and uh yeah purpose and uh it makes it, it just i don't know it's just been really really fun and cool to have an impact uh very directly on other people um because substitute teaching is uh, is a hell of a job if you're an artist and you got a college degree and you want a part-time hustle i can highly encourage substitute teaching it's it's so much fun um but anyway um Aside from all of that, I got some links in the description that you can check out. I'm going to have a link to, um, you know, obviously there's the MailChimp link, there's the DistroKid link, there's a, a couple ways to donate, um, and there's also this visible link, which is if you need a new cell phone provider and you want to pay like 20 bucks a month and you don't want any other bullshit like you don't need to get a sim card or whatever it's really easy i switched to visible and i was like oh wow this is awesome so that's the only reason i'm promoting it like i think it's a really awesome service um same with mailchimp and distrokid although distrokid I have a love-hate relationship. They make it very hard for you to collect your like uh, royalties. But if you just want a fast, easy way to get your stuff on streaming services and you're not really concerned about how much money you're going to make, then definitely just sign up for DistroKid. It's, it's, it's the easiest way to do that um, and probably the cheapest way as well. Um, I'm also going to have a link. Um, my guest today is going to do a direct-to-vinyl pre-order right now and they're gonna hit us hit the studio in new york in june okay and if you're looking for a gift or something to get check this out this is a personalized vinyl that will be tracked live okay and you get to pick the song and these guys will go into the studio and they'll record the song live it gets uh you know put right onto the vinyl and you have it one of one it's a it's a unique seven inch for you so check that link out that's also going to be in the description all right i have with me a very very special guest hailing all the way from the faraway lands of ohio i have chris from wednesday demonstration chris thank you so much for coming on the show <laughs> what is up what is up <laughs> Now, people don't know this, but the the correspondence between me and Chris goes all the way back to, like, January of 2023. So this is a long time in the making, so I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited to, yeah, like, finally so do the show. Yeah. Um, now, before we get rolling here, I want to do, like, a fast five rapid-fire questions, and these questions are going to be your firsts, okay? The first things that, that oh, have man. happened in your life, all right? 
So let's go okay. with number one. What was your first concert? Man, probably being taken to Peter, Paul, and Mary by my parents. Wow. Excellent. All right. Now, what was... Yeah, there were hippies into that stuff. Yeah. I was a lot, a lot of Peter, Paul, and Mary on, uh, on vinyl growing up. And like the doors and stuff. But yeah, definitely being taken to, to Peter, Paul, and Mary. They're a big influence. <laughs> now, now, then, what was the first song that you learned how to play? Oh, my gosh. Does song count as in, like, lyrics and stuff, or just, like, a riff, maybe? The first thing that got you to pick up an instrument and, and was like, I want to learn that. Um, I learned, like, the Ghostbusters chords in guitar lessons with my guitar teacher. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. now, what was the, <laughs> now, what was the first song you wrote? Oh, man. Um, a turn of was in high school. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, for a band I was in. Crap. Maybe it was called like Nyko or something like that. I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, I think that was, yeah, gosh. I mean, maybe I was in middle school then. It was obviously not a great song. It, it, did um, it ever see the light of day or was it just one of those things that you wrote? you got it out and then you just kind of put it in a folder or something i i wrote it and i showed my buddy and we practiced it a few times so we never even played a show or anything it was just like one of those things like cool dude if we're ever in the band like we should play this song and like nothing ever happened to it so now what was the first like travel spot that you remember going to like the first destination you went to like outside of where you lived to visit oh man I actually, I lived in Japan for two months as a wow. kid in, shit, was it second grade or fifth grade or sixth grade or something like that? My parents, uh, yeah, there was like this like scientist like exchange program. So we went oh. over, yeah, it wasn't second grade. So I went over there in second grade and I lived in uh, Tokyo and Kyoto for two months. It was wild. It was awesome. But you were, so, but you, but you were from Ohio still, but like back then? Oh, this was, I was back there. I was living in, uh, in Syracuse, New York. Wow. From yeah, Syracuse to Japan. Syracuse to Japan. Jesus. <laughs> what a jump. Now, what was your, yeah. all right, lastly, last question. What was the first hobby you remember, like, picking up? What was the first thing that you were like, hey, I want to do that? Uh, I think it was uh, probably playing baseball as a kid. Mm. I think that was the first thing I wanted to do. Baseball. But I wasn't very good. I was just scared of being like I was scared of just like missing the ball with my glove and getting hit in the face and stuff. Yeah. So like, yeah, it was not good. So that is a big <laughs> thing for like a lot of kids. Like a lot of people think about sports with kids um, as being like, eh, like I don't know if I want a coach yelling at my kid or this and that. But like, there's a lot of things that people learn. I think as adults that stem all the way back to those like initial sports teams, you know, and that fear of getting over that, like learning how to skateboard, learning like those first hobbies that we picked up, like there's so much fear involved with a lot for a lot of us. I think as kids, it's the first time we really put ourselves out there. You know what I mean? For observation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you don't want to be good. Like you don't want to be bad at what you're doing. Right. And you feel yeah. like you're comparing yourself to all these other people. Yeah. And yeah, I just didn't want to take like a baseball to the face. Although it's funny when I got older, I played hockey and I was like a goalie. So oh, I was shit. fine. I was fine at that point, like getting hit with pucks and stuff, but something, you know, yeah. Baseball, <laughs> you know hockey. baseball Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Baseball, hockey is definitely yeah. probably the top two skilled ones that you could probably do as a kid. Now, um, Let's talk about Wednesday demonstration. Your your yeah. la the latest record you guys have out is called A Dying First World Nation and this record um it's just kind of like it just feels like one thing after the other like just getting pummeled with, you know, facts and 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 just all of these like lyrics like just heavy shit and I just wanted to know how did the LP come together was it just like man i there's all these different things going on and i have something to say about all of them or was it just like a snowball that just slowly started collecting with songs 
Yeah, yeah. First of all, thanks so much for uh, those kind of words. Like we try to try to make that that those songs hit. Yeah, for me, it's just like um, it was just like I just constantly writing about stuff that pisses me off, you know. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, like I guess we should put these songs onto onto something, you know. And I just and, and like originally when we started the band, I like had written some more like kind of like pop punky tunes, and I guess there are some on there. Um, but also, I think some of the songs there like just lean a little heavier. Right. Um, it was just like, pretty angry stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I wrote uh, some new. Uh, yeah, I just been like writing. I was like, hey, I just want to put these out there, and then we wanted to re-record some stuff that I just had done like myself as like demos. Oh you right. Know, um, with a full band, yeah. So basically, but every song that I ever write is just like, oh man, like this is making me mad. So I'll just sit down and like write a song about that. And then eventually, it's like, well, how do we put that out there? You know, sometimes we'll drop singles, but it felt like the right time to put, uh, you know, put to put that album out there. So, and it it it's cool, but it also kind of sucks that at the point that you probably wrote these songs because this record came out in October in 2023. So what sucks and is cool is that these a lot of these songs are still relevant. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time it's like like we're still talking about Trump, we're still talking about, you know, pro life and all of these things and I'm just like, "Oh wow, it's it's so interesting that 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 you have a record like this that was so on the nose for like things that were going on in current events and and politics and yet somehow history is just still repeating you know yeah yeah no i yeah it's it's wild because i remember at one point i was looking for um some other people to join the band like right someone like checked it out and they're like oh like you got these songs but like they're gonna be dated you know like hey like what's the point of playing like stuff you know because in a few years and i'm like like i guess you could think that way but like people are still listening to you know like Neil Young writing about, you know, Four Dead in Ohio, which, you know, it's since right. like, I teach against Kent State, that's a very, like, relevant thing. So I don't know. Yeah, the, it's, you know, it, yeah, like you say, it's sad and scary that, you know, but, I mean, but at the same time, like, so much of the world is just built around oppression and power, right? And that's just going mani- to mm-hmm. manifest itself in so many ways. And we'll just continue to. So, yeah, I'm on all, all these issues, right, are not, are not going away, sadly. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll give us more shit to write about. So let's jump into this uh, record now. This this first tune is called Questions About Mass Incarcerations. Check it out. Awesome.
Okay. All right, that tune was called Questions About Mass Incarceration. It's the second tune off of A Dying First World Nation by Wednesday Demonstration. And you can get the record at wednesdaydemonstration.bandcamp.com. They also have a really rad website, wednesdaydemonstration.com, where you can see all types of cool shit going on there. Um, now, Dying First World Nation, what's your favorite tune off of this record? Oh, man. And that's just probably questions about mass incarceration. Nice. Um, and we just yeah, heard it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's perfect. And actually, it's funny. We play that song second at every gig. Like, we choose our oh. opener, and then, like, we go right into that. Um, uh -huh. I just like it because it has like, that cool, like, drum beat. You know, it's just like a yep. weird, and it's just like it's a yelly, kind of like a megaphone vocal right. sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I just think it, it's, like, simple, but I think it's just, like, Simple and good. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and and it has yeah. that like that chorus element where it's like the hook like really gets you in. You know, the rich get richer, and then you're just like, oh shit. And then as like that's one thing I love about like music like ACDC or Rancid. Like you know when you have that chorus element that that's what really brings people in. You know, a lot of the time and harmonies. You know. Mm -hmm. And then they can yeah, really pay attention to what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the chorus. Like we try. Yeah, I just try to write stuff. I'm like, okay, I like people like could scream this part or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, that, that that the line "The rich get richer and the poor get prison" is actually a book by this guy like Jeffrey Ryman, and he basically is wow. writing about like how we pay so much attention to like um, burglaries and robberies. It's like crimes, and there's so much like drumming up fear over that when really like white collar crime right and like wage theft and all this other shit is just like way more of a drag on society like it costs yeah. us way more you know and so that's the argument right so you can do a lot of stuff if you're rich but if you're poor like we punished you for like the smallest thing so yeah and it, and it feels like for some reason the white collar crimes are like really hard to get caught for because <laughs> they're not yeah, really looking out for it <laughs> and like even like i, I literally s just saw a video today Talking about like all the charges against Trump and this fucking dude, right. I think Kevin O'Leary or something was right, like, right, 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 right. oh yeah, like he shouldn't be punished because like real estate developers do these crimes like every day. Like he, and that that was his excuse, right? Right. And the person interviewing him was like, but these are crimes, right? And he was like, yeah, but people do them all the time. Which, uh, oh yeah, so I guess if rich people do it enough, that like it, it's, yeah, you know, it sets the he, he precedent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just said like the harsh truth out loud, which is wild that he he said, but like you know so now yeah. what if you can remember what was like the first because i think for a lot of us at least like in america the indoctrination of like our history and our society and the way our country works and we're the good guys you know um it's it's very strong in childhood we don't even fucking like understand how strong it is. Like even as a substitute teacher now, they're they're still playing like the Pledge of Allegiance in Philly public schools. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe we're still doing this. Um, Man, and yeah. and then the national anthem before the sports games and all that kind of stuff. What do you remember? What was the first snowball that kind of that got pushed for you, where you're like starting to notice? white supremacy and you're pushing away from the indoctrination like you're starting to like basically wake up and be like wait this shit is kind of fucked like do you remember if there was one moment or one thing I that like was, yeah, took you out i think the, the the yeah the impetus for that i just think sort of more of a collection of moments of like mm -hmm. i think maybe in high school or like in the middle school um i think it was like early high school like just getting in like ska Right. And like hearing like, a lot of songs about like unity and like mm -hmm. I know like uh, anti-racist action was like going on there as an organization I think before they transitioned into plea for peace um, and just like hearing like a lot of uh, about that and like you know activism and getting involved that to me was sort of like hey oh okay like there are all these issues and wow like it's connected to like the music I like that was just sort of like you know mm -hmm. the moment where it's like oh man like now I can you know learn more, you know, and, you know, enjoy myself by listening, you know, to music that I enjoy and also connect with people and, and, and educate myself, you know, um, about a lot of things going on. So, yeah, I think it was that, 
Um, and also, too, I was in the, um, like, sort of, like, into the hardcore scene a little in Syracuse right. growing up. Oh, and wow. And so, like, people, the idea, like, like, Earth Crisis and stuff like that, you know, was huge at that point. And, um, so the idea of, like, thinking about, oh, things like, you know, like, animal rights and stuff like that, you know. Wow, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, the straight edge movement of, like, oh, okay, like, there's all these, like, messages we're getting, like, and, like, what's like, what does it look like? And, like, what does pushing back, you know, look like? against that so i mean that was not necessarily sort of like the white supremacy necessarily but just sort of like the just the machines that are going on in society right, right? It was just kind of like opening my eyes to like oh man like this is like how things actually work yeah so. and how common certain things are like how common racism is when you start like looking at the like you're looking for the microaggressions you know you can you can see the things like so sometimes if you're paying attention to it right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure now when it comes to songwriting one of the things that i admire so much about you and your band is how you're able to like so on the nose articulate what you're feeling and why you're feeling it you know even citing like you're practically citing sources and <laughs> you know what i mean and and citing even specific events like i have to shout out joey steel from from brooklyn he he was the first person that really kind of popped my bubble on how you can put that kind of stuff in your songs because i had mm -hmm. never like the music that i was growing up with and stuff it was like political but it was also kind of like obscure where it wasn't really you weren't really 100 percent sure what they were talking about you know but like yeah. this is so clear and when when i saw joey Steele and i saw a lot of the brooklyn punk bands talking about like really specific shit i was like oh wow this is cool that that they can write a song about that it doesn't need you don't need to disguise it in metaphors and things like that so how with songwriting how do you typically do it in that way do you have like the lyrics that thing that you're pissed off about and then you're like all right let me find some riffs that i can accompany this or do you kind of do it the other way around yeah, that's a, a great question. Like, to, to what you're saying, too, just, like, to kind of, like, speak on that for a real quick second. Like, yeah, I feel like listening to a lot of punk and stuff growing up, there's a lot of talk about, like, a lot of lyrics are like, oh, you know, do what you want, I guess, you know, like, and fuck authority and stuff. But, like, great, right? But it just sort of very general, yeah, exactly. you know, motivations, you know, of just, like, don't let people control you. Like, oh, like yeah, fucking right. Um, but for me, I feel like, it's always like, man, there's this is one specific like topic going on, and like I want to write like a whole song about, like I want every lyric to be about that, and like to tell the story. So you listen, you're like, wow, okay, now I'm thinking about that or connecting or like, oh, I was just pissed off about like fucking overturning Roe vs. Wade that like you were right now. Right. Like here's a song about it. So for me, it's like it always comes down to like, okay, what like what topic do I want to write the song about, um, and mm. then probably thinking of a few lyrics like, okay, like these are like things I want to say. Um, and then just kind of like thinking, okay, well, how the, the riff is gonna go, maybe, and like fitting it out. I do a lot of songwriting, like just walking around, actually, yeah. like walking my dog and stuff. I'm like, okay, this is the lyric, this is the thing, this is pretty cool. And like, I'm, I'm fortunate that like I can play a fair amount of instruments. So, like, I think a lot in terms of song structure from like a drummer's standpoint. Oh, um, shit. Like, okay, so we're gonna write, like, so this gonna be this beat here, right? And then, like, we'll pause, and then the chorus, I want it to be like this beat here, and then, like, go back and make the interlude be kind of like this thing. So, basically, when I'm done, like, on the walk, I basically just usually just go upstairs, like, to my attic, right? This, like, electronic kit and plug in the shit and just do, like, a demo on the drums, like, the whole drum part. And then I'll go back and figure out the key and, like, uh, you know, put in the guitar the parts. Melody, yeah. And then, like, yeah, the melody, and then I have like the lyrics kind of figured out. But yeah, it all comes from like, you know, lyrics and structure, and then building like upon upon that. So actually. it actually comes so. from rhythmically, kind of thinking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like these are the the lyrics, but like yeah, like I, the verse is gonna sound like this, and the chorus is gonna sound like this, and like I'll put it all together, and like, you know, yeah. So it it is weird, yeah, in that sense that it's just like a very like rhythm focus mm. thing or like, and like percussion you know focusing and you know structural 
kind of thing. Like, I know a lot of bands do it differently. Maybe they'll write a whole song, then they'll plug in lyrics and stuff. For me, it kind of goes back and forth, but where it all comes together, it's like, okay, I'm going to lay down the drums, mm. right? And then this, this structure. Mm, so you kind of like zigzag know. then. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has it ever gotten to a place where you have these initial ideas and then you go to demo it and you're like, wait, what's in my head is not coming out the way I think it is and you have to go back to the drawing board or something like that? Yeah, there are definitely songs that just have not seen the light of day because I'm like, oh, this is like kind of cool. And then I'll write it and like even like record like a whole demo and be like, actually, no, this is not it. <laughs> and like, I'm not going to do anything with it. And actually like this, we have this one song we're going to record soon um, that I actually had like a whole other version of it and I wrote it and like with this like, guitar part and this like in this beat and I was just like listening, kept listening to it and I was like, I just don't like how any of this sounds. It's like, I really like the lyrics and I like this chorus and I like this chorus lead guitar mm. part. But, like, it's just not hitting it and it took me a really long time to figure out like what to do right with it and I was like okay maybe we'll just try it this way and i've been avoiding thinking about it and i was like oh this is gonna make it like a little more popular um then i was like okay whatever just lean into it and i was like oh okay this actually like works mm. you know so i think that was like, the biggest restructuring i've ever you know restructuring i've ever gone through mm. so usually i think fortunately it, it works in like the first idea i'm a, i was like sort of a big believer sometimes it's like trusting your gut Oh, so I yeah. think in many times, like the first version, I'm like, okay, this is it, cool. Or, you know, or I write that and I'm like, eh, it's just not that good, so we won't do it. Right. But yeah, that the song coming up is like the only time when it's been like, oh, like this is worth keeping, but in a different way, you know? Right. So. Yeah, I listen, uh, I listen to uh, Rick Rubin a lot, and Rick Rubin, yeah. in, in his book, he talked about, well... I, I'll say he quoted John Lennon as being a guy that was like, when you have the song idea, you know, like try to do as much of it as soon as that first inspiration hits, you know, because that's often going to be what gets the song done. And then I heard Rick Rubin interview Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, who is like the complete opposite he's like he just he i forget what the term he used but he just is like i just i just fuck with it and fuck with it and fuck with it and fuck with it and he Man. <laughs> and he basically <laughs> until he drives himself so crazy that um it gets to it gets to a point where he just feels like there's nothing left to fuck with you know it's so yeah, interesting it's very to hear. much like perfectionist mantra yeah right there yeah. um I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I could do that. I'm kind of just like, okay, this is it. Like, maybe we could make it cool in these ways. But I'm like, I don't know, like how much time do I want to spend? I'm not a, uh, for me, it's not just like, you know, I don't want to spend hours or days on the song. Usually it's like, you know, come up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Think about it and like, oh, okay. Like a few hours, like get it down. Like the song Pro-Life is a lie. Like literally Roe vs. Way got overturned. And I was like, I need to go write a song about it. Yeah. I went into the attic and like in like an hour and a half, like that was it. Right, so. yeah. That was kind of what, when I was listening to this album, that's what I kind of thought. Like, if there was just, like, a new story came out and you just went right to the to the notebook and each time, you know, all for, for, for most of these tunes, because that's actually, like, real, like, people don't realize how, like, hard that actually is. Like, it's a lot easier to, like, lean into melodies and kind of, like you know, be a little more woo-woo with songwriting, I think it's a lot harder to actually say something. You know what I mean? Like, informational, informative. It's a lot harder yeah. to put that kind of shit into a song because it doesn't usually sound as pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to, like, pat myself on the back <laughs> for that at all. I think, like, it's, it's a question of, like, lyrics, right? And, like, okay, like, one thing I try to avoid... <laughs> And this is probably not ever going to happen just because I just I don't know how it would come from the song. It's like, I just hate listening to songs and hearing people use the word jaded to rhyme with stuff. I just feel okay. like yeah. that term is just so much and like punk and stuff. And so I was like, I'm never going to write a song where we do that. And so, yeah, so I'm just like, <laughs> okay, like what like message do I want to say? And like what clearly like what like, how do I clearly speak to like this certain thing going on? Um which I think is why sometimes and sometimes just like things don't work out because I'm like, oh, lyrically, I just don't know how to say this <laughs> thing. But yeah, I think, you know, I, I do, I guess, like take some pride and be like, okay, like you listen to these songs and it's like very clear 
what it's about, right? And you can yeah. follow and like hear like this story, you know. Um, that's so, so funny that the the word jaded. Like for me, I think. Well, thanks to you, if you use that. <laughs> you use that word. Yeah, like <laughs> songs about being jaded in the punk world have been written, and I I think from a songwriting standpoint, the thing that I, that always gives me the ick is when people rhyme girl with world. I it's. <laughs> It's been done so many times. We don't need to keep doing it. But I'm I'm gonna digress. Let's jump into another tune here. <laughs> Off of Dying for Us One Nation. This tune is uh the seventh tune on this record. It's called For Trans Kids in Texas. Check it out. That tune was called for trans kids in Texas, and uh, of course, it's Wednesday demonstration dot bandcamp dot com. Now, um, you your your band right now is based out of the Ohio area, right? Yeah, we're kind of scared. We got some people in Cleveland. We we say we're from Cleveland because that's easier, right? Sure. But kind of like Cleveland, like Akron area. I live near Kent, but you know right. everyone knows Cleveland, so. <laughs> also, hey, that's where Trent Reznor was based out of also Cleveland. That's weird that that's coming back up. But um, yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, what does it feel like um because Ohio Ohio is kind of a strange state um when I've been there. And and being somebody from Pennsylvania, it's it's kind of well Philadelphia like the I don't want to say Pennsylvania because like the rest of Pennsylvania is very different but Pennsylvania and Ohio are neighbors but it feels like 
there's this odd connection where there are certain things where Pennsylvania and Ohio are so aligned with that they could practically be the same state. But then when it comes to the things that they're different in, it's very, very different. And I'm just wondering, like, because there's all these different cities in Ohio, too, with Cleveland and Columbus and all that. What does it feel like politically nowadays in Ohio or where you're at or Cleveland? Yeah, it's funny you say that, right? Because, yeah, so my, my parents live in Pittsburgh, actually. So we right, kind of got yeah. like, yeah, sorry with the Philly-Pittsburgh rivalry thing going on there. I think Western PA <laughs> should be Ohio, but that's just me. I mean, I mean that basically is, right? I mean, yeah. it's like Youngstown, Pittsburgh... Cleveland, like, I mean, we have, like, I walk around campus, there's just tons of Steelers fans, you know? So, sure. like, the whole, like, the Pittsburgh, like, kind of, like, Rust Belt um, mentality definitely, you know, exists in, like, sort of over those state lines. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's weird, you know, because growing up, everyone was like, oh, Ohio's a purple state, right? And, but, like, clearly, it's just, like, super, super red now, you know? And we have, wow. you know, crazy fucking people in charge of the legislature doing tons of bad shit. You know, anti-trans legislation. They just passed legislation last year that basically allows anyone to carry a concealed handgun. Like, you don't need a permit anymore. Like, you can, you know, you I could walk out my door, concealed handgun, no training, mm. no permit. You know, if the cops come up to talk to me, I don't even have to tell them that I'm carrying one. And that's basically sort of like the existence that um, we're in right now. Yeah, so a clear, clear red state. Um, and it, but it is weird, right? Because you have Cleveland, like so these urban centers, right? You even Kent, like as a town, and um, the colleges, you know, very huge yeah, colleges in yeah. Ohio. Yeah, yeah, and so these college towns, I think you know, are definitely you know not sort of you know in this sort of like MAGA brainwash mindset. But like you go, you know, ten minutes away. Like I remember one time when the earliest shows I played in Ohio, just drive into this venue and just like passing all these like Trump signs, and like man, like I don't really want to play here like if some locals walk in and like listen to us like they're not gonna be happy like so it, it, it is weird being in like a political punk band like trying to be very conscious of like where we're playing like i don't want to get fucking shot somewhere you know like yeah. because of you know what people are, are are feeling um right yeah so yeah i mean if i could exist in a different state <laughs> you know that would be amazing um but also you know there are people i care about here and so we were trying to you know, do the best we can to fix things here. So, but yeah, it's not, in some ways it's just like, man. Ugh. Yeah. It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Um, now this is going to be a random question, but I, I, I wanted to know from someone in Ohio, what has happened since all of those train derailments? Because there was that one time period where it was like, dude, this train derailed, this river's fucked, everyone's property value went down, and it was like this top news story where all these trains were derailing and, and shit, and Ohio was getting fucked up, and now we don't hear shit anymore. It's like Flint, Michigan. Like, we don't we don't hear nothing. Yeah, yeah. So that was East Palestine, which is like yeah. southeast from where I'm at, maybe, I think like an hour or something like that. But I think the short answer is like nothing, really has happened like um you know i don't think things are being fixed norfolk southern still cruising along right i think they had like some other train derailment in like right pennsylvania recently or something oh, but God. like yeah no one's been fucking punished there you know yeah. i mean this deregulation just totally screwed o over like people in this town um yeah I mean, and fucking like joe biden like i don't know if he ever even like i guess he visited eventually but like i mean sort of the, the, the way that it just got ignored yeah um you know it's it sucks you know mm. um speaks i think a lot to just you know um one sort of the the adhd-ness of like the news cycle right sure, and like people's yeah, attention yeah. and also just yeah like you know there's just not much punishment for corporations doing evil things these yeah. days and that it's not repercussions to fix that even like it's at Flint, Michigan, right? It's just like so many things happen to screw things over and then it's just like, it doesn't get addressed. Yeah. You know? And then it just, it just still is a problem for so many people. Um, yeah, that's bizarre because I was like, yeah, I can do, I, we can all obviously do our own research 
with certain things, but I think what's also cool is to just talk to people that are from these kinds of places, you know, that are there every day. Because even when we do this race research, it's our interpretation, right? You know, we're always putting our perspective on everything that we're reading, every video that we see. Like we're all we're we're looking at it through our own eyes, but then when you hear it coming from someone else, you're really hearing it come from their perspective. So that's why. I wanted to ask yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, I don't admit, like, I'm, like, li- li- a pretty, like, privileged person, you know? So, like, th- th- that sort of, like, incident like, doesn't affect me, like, sure. in-, in very many ways, right? And so there are people in, like, East Palestine, you know, who are, you know, bearing, bearing the total brunt of this stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's, a, a, you know, it's, it's a crime that, you know, what happened to them, so. Just more, more things to write tunes about. Um, now... There's a song about that. I just have not figured it out to the way I like it yet. So <laughs> I trust you. I trust you. It'll come out. Now, lastly, let's let's talk about what you have coming up. You have shows coming up, and you have a direct to vinyl, which is something I've been seeing more and more lately. People have Ooh. been getting these pre orders, these d- direct to vinyl things that people can order talk to me about how what you're doing and how did you even come into this thing <laughs> yeah yeah so actually it was a song um that we wrote and got put out there uh no dreams left america which i think is the one you found actually that you that you were listening to maybe yeah uh, possible yeah so our drummer tom recorded that and we had that out and then so yeah this um recording studio in new york city least of all sound recordings least of all um, reached out to us yeah and they're like hey we found this song we think it's really cool we like to invite you to do this thing we're like okay this sounds interesting yeah and so they, it's like i described it to one friend of mine and they're like oh so it's like cameo for like music and i was like yeah um so what happens is mm-hmm. yeah we go into the studio and we have a pre-order page and people um select the song they want to hear from my catalog they order it and so when we go into the studio we're going june 14th we go wow. into the studio and we say, hey, okay, you know, Roger ordered this, you know, for trans kids in Texas. And we say, okay, boom, start recording. What's up, Roger? The song's for you. You're fucking awesome. We appreciate you. We do the take live. If we screw up, it's, you know, it's it's on the take. It's and as we play it live, it just gets, it gets basically made into this vinyl. So people are wow. buying a live personalized take of a song for them. And then it gets shipped to them in a few weeks. Incredible. Um, yeah, so it's really cool. It's just a chance for us to connect with fans in a better way and just for them to have this cool piece of music. So, wow. yeah, we're still, we're, yeah, we're excited. We're happy that we got asked to do it. Um, and things are coming together. It's checking our pre sales today. So, I think we got like 13 takes wow. so far or something like that. Oh, God. So, you better yeah. start stretching because that's going to be a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was the funny thing is, too, right? Because, like, a lot of them are the same song you know so we're, we're used to playing shows you know just going through a set list but right. now we're probably going to go in and probably record like you know five or six takes of like certain songs you know to be interesting so yeah, but i mean wow. i'm here for it we're super we're super excited it's a cool opportunity um it's just do like a mini tour as well too it's cool so we're gonna have i'm gonna put a link to that in the description for anybody that wants to if you need if you have a birthday and you don't know what to get you know, fucking, <laughs> fucking get them a vinyl, get them a vinyl, personalize it, whatever. Um, what kind of, that's such a cool gift. You know what I mean? We don't need another mug. We don't need another candle, you know, whatever. Get, get yourself a personalized vinyl that was recorded live. Um, For you, yeah. A little <laughs> seven inch. I mean, it's, yeah, it's wild. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, Chris, it was such a pleasure to finally have this show happen and manifest, um, the new year record later, is awesome. I you for sticking with it, man. Like <laughs> I know, gosh. I know. I'm all I'm 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 crazy like that. Um, but also, uh, what about music coming up? Is anything on the horizon yet, or are we still in the writing process? Uh, we're going. Actually, I got a friend coming over in like a month. Um, we're gonna record wow. four tracks. Actually, wow. yeah. Put out bang, the bang, bang. Excellent. So keep yeah. guys, keep your eyes out on Wednesday, demonstration.bandcamp.com. Um, and definitely pick up the new or the latest record, A Dying First World Nation. Uh, and this tune is the last tune on the record. It's called Executioners. Rip on everybody.
killing people for some small crimes. History has made these wounds and now they're cutting deeper. Blue rise, blue cars up patrol like the Reaper. I can't believe that I'm awake. Open your eyes. I can't believe that I'm awake.